In this lesson, we'll use the hatch command to draw the grass. All right, so I took a little bit of time and cleaned up some of the line work here, and I also added our driveway into this property here. So basically, all we need to do at this point is start to hatch in where our grass is, because at this point, we see a lot of rectangles and lines, and I, I'm starting to be able to make out what's going on here, but I can't really tell where the sidewalk is. So hatching with some grass would actually be really nice. And a little bit later on, when we start adding text and dimensions, we can also call out the dimension of our sidewalk and, and as well as this location. So let's get the grass in place. Okay, so we'll actually start with our medians here and kind of work our way up to our site. So I'm going to type in my hatch command. And there's a couple of things that's kind of discussed before we go with the hatch. Now, I can go with the hatching that represents grass in here. But I really don't like it too much. I think it's a little cartoonish, and the blades are pretty large. So you have, like, large blades of grass. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about here. But I have another one we can go to, and I'll show you that one in just a moment. But we'll actually go to the grass. There it is. So if I were to hatch, I definitely would have to change my scale. We'll change it to 50. We'll see what that does. But you can see, once I try to hatch this in, how this looks. It's kind of, you know... Too, too designed, too perfect, you know. Um, I want to, don't want it to be as pr as uh, obvious and and too designed with all these straight lines representing my grass. Now you can go with this. Person looking at this will know that hey, that must be grass. But I'm kind of picky and I like to use a different symbol. And maybe a little bit later on, just to avoid confusion, in addition to a new type of hatch, we'll also have maybe some text telling maybe what type of grass. So totally up to you. So I'm going to get rid of this hatch that we just put in here, and I'll show you the one that I actually like to use. So again, I'll go to hatch, and I'm going to use the one that I'm going to show you here, um, mostly because I don't have the material that it really represents in this uh, site or this drawing at all. So it won't, shouldn't cause any confusion. So we're going to go look for sand. And it's probably up this way. So when I find this sand, you'll see exactly why I actually like this to represent grass better because when you're looking at the site plan, you're quite a distance away and you're not going to see these giant individual blades of grass that look like, you know, Lego. So I'm going to select this element. And once I click in there, you can actually see how much better that looks. Uh, I know that this is grass. I know that this is a different material than this as well as this, you know. And as well, you know, we can also call this out with some text if we wanted to. So. That's the one we're actually going to use. So I can actually come up to this area, and we're going to continue hatching. And what happened here is I tried to hatch in this area. I'm going to escape out of this command. And you'll notice it automatically shot the hatch that we just drew. It basically got rid of it and populated this entire area, including my floor plan. Now, that's not what I want. And the reason for that, I'm going to go ahead and erase that, is because we've got these little gaps throughout our design or our drawing here. So it's going to be really important that we use polylines to close up that system so that we can hatch inside of a boundary. Now there's two ways around it. One, going back after the fact with a polyline and closing up any gaps. Or two, trying to try your best to get it right from the beginning and not having gaps and being conscious about your what you're drawing and how you're drawing it because you're anticipating having to hatch those areas. So we're going to kind of do it after the fact um, this might be a good exercise for you to learn how to solve that problem. So I'm just going to jump to polyline, and all I'm going to do is trace in this front yard, and I think that might actually help us out. So we'll go this point. I'm going to snap it down here. And again, all I'm using is a polyline to get this accomplished. And I'm going to make sure that I don't go into my driveway because that's a different material other than, you know, my grass. So, And basically all I'm doing is tracing the front yard. Now this should alleviate the problem, hopefully. If not, we'll have to take the exact same approach uh, to the backyard. So, I believe that's it. We'll click on our polyline, see if that worked. Nope. We need to finish that off going in this direction. So that should do it. So that should highlight our entire area here. 
And I noticed a small gap up in this area, so I'm going to make that adjustment here. So we're going to grab this guy and move it. And then I'm going to close off this tiny gap because that has the potential to cause problems. So now let's see if we can get this accomplished. So I'm going to type in hatch. I'm going to hatch my front yard. Nice. I'm going to hatch my backyard. And it looks like it still did that. So now I'm going to control Z a couple of times. I see that our front yard's taken care of. So it's going to be our backyard. So we're going to have to take the same approach for using a polyline to trace everything in our backyard. So I'm going to do the exact same thing again. So I'm going to go polyline. And I'm just going to trace our backyard. Like so. That easy. So you can see the definitely see the benefit of making sure that your lines and your gaps are your lines are meeting up nicely and you know there's no gaps or anything uh, within your drawing. Let me turn off my O snaps really quick. So you don't have to go back and do this after the fact. But occasionally it happens. So we'll definitely solve this problem. I'm gonna snap to this point, snap up here. And all we're doing is tracing out this backyard. I'm going to go around this, this uh, door here. And I should be good there. I'm confident we're good there. So I'm going to continue on with my polyline from here. So once I have this completely drawn in, I should now then be able to go back in and hatch my front and backyard without any problems. So let's give it a shot. We'll do it again. So we'll say hatch. Let's try the backyard first. That was our main problem child. Bingo. Do the front yard and bingo. So what that did was it basically closed off the boundary for our front yard and our backyard and we simply hashed it in. So we were trying to avoid having any of the hatching getting inside of our floor plan as well as on our concrete because the concrete and grass are two totally different materials. So now we can finish off the rest of this drawing using this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hatch that in. We'll repeat the hatch. We can do our medians. And if you wanted to, we can come in and, and do these uh, individual site areas here. So I'll take a little bit of time and finish this off, um, just applying this hatch to specific areas throughout our surrounding areas. And in the next lesson, we'll begin putting in some and marking some of our utility easements in the front as well as the backyard. So I'll see you in the next lesson.